All right, where we were when we left before spring break was working on our logo designs. And we got we in, wow, it was a loud. Finished one. with our gift. Woo. <laughs> so that's because I have the class speakers set up for our presentations. We could probably lower those a little bit. So we started getting introduced to vectors for the first time. We went into sketching and doing our proving grounds for thumbnails. We did them in three different ways. We took our most refined sketch approach. And we learned how to make a sketch that treated it as black lines or as black shapes rather than just outlines, right? So this was my refined logo. And then we learned how to bring that into our vector.com program. So I'm going to open that up and trace it. So I'm going to use it online, our freeware, and trace it as a vector shape using the, the paths and the anchor points, turning off the outlines and eventually filling it. And then we refined that, and we saved them as SVGs and as vector files. And now, and then we saved it as an SVG and brought it into PhotoP. These are all the videos we've done, and we did that in order to start adding colors using layer styles. All this. Sound a little familiar? So now we got to find those files and make sure we're ready to make them print ready because what is due today on our course outline is all parts of assignment four. And then we're actually also going to print one of those final logo solutions, either the black solution or the color solution, along with two other artworks that we've completed in the class. They could be exercises or assignments. And then we also even went over how you could color it within the vector program itself and then bring that in and post it. So all of that got finished and posted, but I'm going to review it because part of making things print ready is being able to go back to your artworks, your digital artwork files, and know how to get the best product and prints from those even after a week off. Oh, wrong class. Here we go. So if we go to assignment four, where we post them, you'll see my refined sketch, my black logo solution, in vector.com and my color logo solution. And then by the end of the last video, I guess I was adding a crown. I don't know. I don't remember that at all. That's a blur. But why was I showing you this? It's because if you want a color treatment that's unique on different parts of your vector, and you want that color embedded within the vector file, you have to color within a vector program like vector.com. Otherwise, if you're happy with your image just having one solid color all the way through, whether it's gradients, whether it's embossing, whether it's highlights, drop shadows, all the things, then you can just do them as layer styles within, within PhotoP. All right. So we'll pick it up from there. I got to organize all these other files, put all this stuff away. Whew. We're going to be outputting a lot of different file types. <laughs> That's all from this morning's class. All right, here we go. So, what files do we have? We have vector files, V-E-C-T-R files. 
that's a good one to start with. So how do we do that? We go to vector.com and we're going to open a file, which is upload an image. And we have to find it. And I am well enough organized, I can do that. And I wanna find the one that is the vector format. Oh, but this is not the way to do it. I need to go home and then say open file because it's a vector format, not a raster format. And then I can open up both SVGs and vectors, but the vector, the dot vector is going to be formatted for this program. So it will have all the different paths and layers that I've used. Even my sketch is in there. Okay, I'm just going to go through all of that stuff pretty quickly here because we're at different parts of this process. So, how do you check if you have a vector? You can start by turning off all of your layers and then turning them on one by one. Do you have a raster file sketch underneath? If you zoom in on it, you'll see the pixels. That's the refined sketch that we built upon. Then we want to turn that off. This was one vector solution. If I click on it, double click on it, I'll see all the anchor points that created this path, right? So there it is. There's no crown there. If I wanted to, I could create one. Let's turn that one off. Then I have another one, which is just the top half. And then I have another one, which is just the bottom half. And those were the two that got merged to give me my final one. Okay. And it's fine to just leave them locked and turned off. All except for the one I want. Now, if I want to make a color version of this, I'm first going to export this out. And I'm going to save it as a vector file. Download. This is just to be safe. It's going to go into my downloads. And then I'm going to save it as an SVG file. That's what's called a scalable vector graphic. That allows you to open it in PhotoP. Download. There's no reason to save it as a non-vector format. No reason to save it as a PNG or a JPEG. We're going to do that in PhotoP. Even though we could set our own pixels here. Now I'm going to duplicate it. I can verify that I've saved it. It's in my downloads. It doesn't have very exciting name. I'll just call this, you know, test. I mean, I should name it with the full thing. 23-2 Carl assignment for black logo. And this is and I accidentally erased the, the vector format, right? Which is something Macs don't really recognize very easily, but it's there. And then I'll also save the SVG. Good. Got my black logo all set. That means I can upload it to Canvas. And that's where this came from. That's the, the black SVG is what I need to take into PhotoP and upload to Canvas. But if I want to do a color version within vector, what do I do? I copy it, command C, and then I paste it, command V, and it'll give me a new path. I'm going to turn off and lock the one underneath it, and now I've got this new path, and I want to color it. So instead of it having a fill that's black, I can choose a fill that's a different color. It looks like I was using campus colors before. I'll do slightly grayed out versions this time. But I can also fill it with other things. I can play with the opacity of that fill. I can play with the types of fills beyond just, and we went through this all in those videos. So once I find a color solution I like, 
Can change the angle of that gradient, the stretch of it. It's kind of fun. Maybe I change this color to be Hmm, let's see. Not so dark. Well, there we go. Let's change that. And then I can also add a shadow if I want. This is something unique to Pixlr. This is not something that's within Illustrator, and I can change the color of that shadow and change the opacity of it. And I can even change the blur on it, the softness of it. So all of these are very effective vector tools. If I want to color the EPS as a vector. But all of those things I just did, I could also do in PhotoP. The only thing I can't do in PhotoP is have separate vector shapes. So that's why I was demonstrating in the last video how I can create a new vector. Just use the pen tool here. Create a little crown. And then, of course, I can change my curves into straights by double-clicking and double-clicking or just moving the handles, holding down Command, using the handles independently, all these different methods that we've been playing with. And then I can select the whole thing. Oops, I just added an anchor point. And I can rotate it, and I can move it. And right now it has a border, but maybe I just want it to give a, a fill, but maybe I want that fill to just be a solid color, or maybe I want it to be a gradient. All of these are the options I have. Maybe I want it to have its own drop shadow. You can try a, a radial gradient this time. Looks like it's shiny. And we're going to make it white. And then the other color of that gradient, we're going to make green. And in the middle of that gradient, we're going to make, I guess, a blue. Oh, because it's radial, though. It's coming from the inside. I see. It's all very experimental, and you can try it any way you like. But for this, I'll just do a solid green, and then I'll put a shadow underneath it. And I'm going to change that shadow's tone to something pretty gray, and then take its opacity down, and then blur it out. Yeah. So now, just like I saved my vector before, if I wanted to save this as a color vector solution, I want to make sure I change the names in downloads. And I already did, right? Because now when I export them as first a vector file and then as an SVG, they're going to be called, you know, page one and page two, that kind of thing. And the difference is, I'm going to change it from black logo now to color logo. And that's necessary if I want something separately colored, like the crown a separate color than the other things. 
Okay, these are all vector formats, which means we can't